Hello, I'm Amanda and this is... Kate, hello and welcome to the National Museum of Australia. Today we're doing a fun at home activity. Yay! Yay! <laughs> okay, thanks guys. We know you can't come into the museum at the moment so we're trying our best to get some programs up online so when you're at home you can have a chance to do some awesome activities with us. Uh, and thank you to everyone who watched last week. Very true. Yes, we had a lot of feedback, some wonderful feedback. And if you have any more today, please send us your feedback to programs at nma.gov.au or you can connect with us via our social media sites. Oh, okay. But before we start, I think we'd better do a welcome to country, Amanda. It's really important we yeah. acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land. So we're here in Canberra acknowledging the Ngunnawal, Ngambri and Ngunnawal people. So first up, follow the actions. Here is the land that covers the land. Covers the land, yep. Here is the sky that covers the land. Here are our hearts that care for the land. So welcome. Okay, guess what we're doing today, Kate? Mm. Oh, I don't know. Let's see, are we doing some uh, Mataburrasaurus? We did that last week and it was lots of fun and I could talk about Mataburrasaurus for hours, but no, can I give you a clue? Oh, is it a bird? Not bad, no, it definitely has wings, but not a bird. Okay. You often see them at night time and they often fly towards lights. Now, it's gotta be something connecting to the museum. I think I know. Is it the moth? It is the moth. We have an enormous big moth hanging in our hall by a very well-known artist. Reke Rennie, that's right. He does some amazing artworks. And it, that, the Bogon moth that he's created connects to the cult, his culture and to the nature and the environment. It's a beautiful piece. So, because you can't come in and visit, we'd really like to show you a, an image of the moth. Kate and I are pretty clever. I think if we count to three and click our fingers, we might be able to get you to see the image. So, can you guys at home help us count? One, One, two, three, click. Did you see it? Can you see our beautiful image that hangs in the Gandel Atrium in our main hall? It's pretty beautiful. It is. So the moth story is really important to Indigenous culture, Kate. It's a really old story, not just three weeks ago. So moths are very important here in Cameron. They came from up in Queensland and often travel all the way down to Mount Kosciuszko yeah. here. So, so this story's been around for, in some cultures for thousands and thousands of years. So we thought today we'd do some craft activities and we'd make a moth. Yeah, let's do it. Now. Don't worry at home if you haven't got the materials because we've got a link that you'll see later and you can actually print out some moths. So there's the body and there's the wings. You can print it on coloured paper or on the actual white paper. Here's Doesn't some really examples matter. here. Oh, Great. So beautiful. So Let's Kate, can you pass me some scissors? I might start cutting out. Okay. Now remember, at home, if you're cutting out, be careful. Get some kid scissors. Get an adult person to help you because we don't really want to have any scissor injuries at home. So cut out your two pieces. And in fact, Kate, have you got something you've already prepared? I do. I do indeed. I've got the back in brown and I've got the wings in black. Oh. So I'm going to start with the top piece and then work on the bottom. Okay, have you got any for me? Ah, uh, I do. Terrific. Look, I've got a special purple one here just for you. Thank you, Kayla. I love purple. <laughs> okay, so your task is to decorate both layers. Now you can glue, you can, you know, colour in, you can stick stickers on, you can use washi tape, anything you like. I'm using Port. some texture on mine. Great. In fact, can you pass me some textures, Kate? Oh, yeah, sure. Do you know any moth jokes? I do know a moth joke. How would you know that I had a moth <laughs> joke? I was full of jokes. And thank you, everyone, last week who sent in some dinosaur jokes. We love your jokes. So, Amanda. Yes, Kate? <laughs> what do you call a big moth? A big moth? A big moth. What do you call it? A big moth? No, a mammoth. A, a mammoth, because it's big. It's fantastic, isn't it? Okay, I'm going to use some of this really beautiful paper. Would you like some of this? I would love some of that, Amanda. That'd be great. I'm going to also add some 
spots to mine and some shapes. Oh, I love I'm gonna that. I'm going to glue those on. I've got some different patterns here, both large and small. I'm going to stick that on. So it's a bit like Freco Rennie's. It's full of colour. And I like the stripes. It's a nice reference. So you're inspired by the artwork, Kate. I am inspired, but it's not going to be coffee. OK. So would you like to see some that we've already made? I think we've got a few. But before we do, Kate, once you've decorated them, we need to join the two pieces. So you can see here our moth is joined. How did you join it, Kate, actually? So the way I joined my piece is I used a split pin. So you get one of these pins. You can find them in all hardware stores. Whatever you've got at home. Mine's missing the feelers, and I like the fact that you've got some on there, Kate. I do. I've sticky taped some feathers I've found. These are beautiful emu feathers straight onto the back. But you might be able to find something at home and that fact, you want to use instead. I'm going to use some ribbon. Kate, what a great idea. What do you call the scientific name for moths and butterflies? Do you know? Ah, uh, I do. I'm, I'm very good at pronouncing it, but let's give it a go. Okay. Lepidoptera. Lepidoptera? Lepidoptera. Can you yeah. say that at home? Lepidoptera. Lepidoptera. I know oh. another big word too. Okay, what's another big word? Connected to moths? Connected to moths. And butterflies? Yes, yes. Okay. Proboscis. A pro what is a proboscis? A proboscis. Anyone know? Let me give you a clue. <laughs> That's right, it's the tongue. The tongue, but is a moth's tongue like ours, Kate? No, not at all. In fact, it's like a straw and it curls the way up back into their mouth. So when they want to drink, it comes out and then they curl it back. Can you do that at home? Can you have a go? Mine doesn't curl too well. Mine doesn't either. <laughs> I'll have to practice that one. No, not very good at that. Have a go. Okay, Kate, can we show some of the ones that some of our friends have made for us? Because we've got some already finished moths here. Ooh, love this one. This one used lots of tape, lots of washi tape on that one. So you might find some tape at home that works well. You can even choose to put a string and attach a bit of string and actually hang it. So it could end up hanging above, a bit like our beautiful moth in the Gandal Atrium. Yep, that's true. Well, thank you guys. We hope you've had fun today. We'd really love to see some of the moths you've made. If you've got any questions or any feedback, so let us know, let us know. Um, at programs at nma.gov.au or connect with us via social media sites. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Bye. See ya.